How are we doing? So um, the message pretty much is you kind of do an assessment after first scrimmage, even though that was just our third, you know, practice in pads. Um, but I think the question you ask is what what percentage of the guys are playing winning football? Um, and are you willing to do the things you need to do to invest in yourself so that you are doing the things that you need to do so that you can improve because the tendency is, especially in the conditions that we're in is it's very easy to endure practice, you know, do what you have to do to get by. Don't really focus. Don't really play, play fast. And if you ask everybody in the room, do you want to win? They'd all say, yeah, we want to win, but are you willing to do the things you need to do to win? And you got to get out of your comfort zone. Some people would say you got to make sacrifices and do things so that you can improve. But, you know, the way I'd rather say it is you got to invest uh, in yourself in terms of doing the things that, that are going to help you on and off the field be the best player you can be. And the bottom line is just to ask yourself, you know, can your teammates trust you to do your job? And that should be everybody's goal in terms of uh, what they strive to do and what they're trying to do so that they – that's how you compete to play. That's how you compete for playing time. So uh, I like the attitude of the team so far. I think we got a lot of guys trying to do that. I think we probably need a critical mass of people to continue to improve so that we can have enough guys that can play winning football. So, um, you know, that's our challenge as coaches, and that's each and every individual's challenge to be able to invest in themselves so we can do that. Sorry, we go. How have you seen Taryn Arnold grow in this offseason? Terry Arnold's, you know, I think anybody that gets experience playing, which he got some experience last year, I think he's much more confident. I think he has a better understanding and um, probably a little more maturity uh, about, you know, what he needs to do to go out there and perform well. So uh, and there's competition at the position. Um, he, Kool-Aid, Trey, you know, are all doing a pretty good job out there. So, uh, I think that's good for everybody in terms of their improvement as well. Back in the middle of Matt. Matt, did you have one or was it Nick? Nick, I'm sorry. Uh, regarding the quarterbacks, do coaches kind of provide some off-the-field evaluation on if the quarterbacks are kind of living up to the leadership habits and communication you guys want from a starter in that role? You know, what I tell the quarterbacks is it's not up to the coaches. You're looking over your shoulder to see if the coach is going to do this or that. How about you forcing me to play? Forcing me to play you. Force us to play you. When you get your reps and you get a chance to play, you play so good, we, we don't have any choice but to play you rather than worrying about all this other stuff. So that's the only way I can answer your question. Back on this side with Charlie. How have you seen a guy like Amari Nablack not only progress as a receiver but also as a blocker? Yeah, he's doing great. You know, he's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. He understands the offense a lot better. Uh, he is a mismatch player to some degree in the passing game, and he's done a really good job. He's very productive in the first scrimmage. And uh, he is blocking better. And uh, I think that uh, he can be a, an impact player for us if he continues to grow and progress. And we're, we're excited about his future. Of course, I'm Steven. Coach, you mentioned specialists before, but who are the guys developing kick return, punt return aspect? Yeah, well, we got Kool-Aid back who – you know, we averaged like 16 yards of punt return last year. So, um, and we're trying to develop some other guys at that position. Uh, Isaiah Bond, uh, Caleb Downs can catch punts. Um, Cole Adams can catch punts. So we're working with more and more guys to be able to do that. Um, kickoff return, you know, K-Law did it last year some. Um, you know, E-Man did it some. So... You know, we'll just have to see how that part of it develops. But um, I think we've got enough good skill guys that we should be able to come up with some pretty good return guys. I'm going to try to steal your analogy about quarterbacks being like a cake in the oven with this question and try to apply it to, to leadership. Uh, when you look at leadership on the whole, if you looked at it like a cake in the oven, how close to being – fully baked do you see that being you know there's a couple things about leadership um you know everybody talks about leadership all the time but i think it's also important that how many guys on the team 
need to be led. So if you've got a bunch of guys that are mature and going about things the right way, they're all setting a good example. They're all buying in. They're all doing the things that they need to do. So they don't really necessarily have to have somebody impact them every day to do the right things. And the more guys that we have that fit in that category, that's more important than the guys that are the leaders on the team. Because I think that's what you're you're trying to get. Now, there are some guys that have an impact on other players. And I think that, you know, there's a couple guys in the offensive line that has provided some really good leadership. I think there's some guys on defense that have some maturity that's provided some leadership. We actually need it at every position because it's if you have guys at every position that are setting a good example every day by what they do, it gives young players somebody to emulate. And I think that's important. But I'll go back to my original point. The fewer guys that we have that need somebody to emulate, the better off we're going to be. You talked after the scrimmage about positions like offensive line and defensive line needing to develop more depth. How is that? How can that happen over the next couple of weeks before kickoff? Or is it what you talked about earlier about people needing to individually um, Just, invest in themselves? Yeah, guys have to focus. They got to get reps. They got to learn from their mistakes. Um, you know, it's maturity. And the only way those players are going to get it is, you know, how many times can we do it over and over and over and over? And it's not, you know, it's not practicing until you get it right. It's practicing it so much you can't get it wrong. And that's how you develop confidence in things in terms of the habits that you develop and the things that you need to do to be able to play to the best of your ability. And that's what we have to do. And, you know, I've talked about this before. You know, when you lose guys on your team, then the younger guys get cast into positions maybe they wouldn't have been in if those guys didn't leave your team. And the depth of your squad gets affected to some degree by some of those things. So it's important that we do a great job of developing the young players and getting them in a position where they can be um, players who can go in and play with confidence and give us a chance to be successful, even if they have to play. What have you seen from the inside linebacker position? Are, are you confident with the group you have there? Well, I, I'm, I think that we need to continue to improve. I think we got a couple guys that are playing really well. I think we need to get more guys to play well at that position. Um, you know, so it's a work in progress for some of the guys, but uh, I'm also pleased with the way some guys are progressing and we just have to continue to work on that group as a whole to get more and more guys who, you know, can contribute in a positive way. All right. Thank you.